advanced math lesson three Pythagorean theorem triangle inequalities and similar polygons and triangles all right so we're going to start with the practice or the example 3.3 and that's the example that we're going to use for this lesson so I have uh, expertly redrawn this triangle on my paper uh, and what we have to do is we either have to use uh, similar ratios or scale factor to find the missing parts of x, y, and z. And then we could even use Pythagorean theorem if we wanted to. So if we look at uh, the triangles we have here, we can tell that they're both right triangles. Uh, they're similar and that this, these are both the hypotenuses, these are both the shorter legs, and these are both the longer legs. So when it comes to similarity, uh, when you have two triangles that are in where one is uh, inverted like this, you need to be able to flip and reflect it. So essentially what I'm doing with this triangle is I'm taking it and I'm flipping it this way and then I am reversing it. So uh, to flip it, the triangle would then look like this. That still doesn't look, that still doesn't quite match up with this one. So I go ahead and I reverse it that way. So now the triangle is oriented in this direction. So once I've got it oriented the right way, um, that makes it a little bit easier to find the similar sides. And you don't have to reorient the triangle if you don't need to, but if you get confused as to which side relates to which, this is a great exercise for you. So after I've flipped it and reoriented it, this side is now X, this side is 7, and this side is Y. So if we're going to use ratios, we could say 10 is, to, uh, 10 is to 7 as 8 is to y, or 10 is to 7 as z is to x. To x. Uh, now the first thing that we can do using simple Pythagorean theorem is we can solve for z. Because we have a hypotenuse, we have one side, we're just missing one on this triangle. So we'll go ahead and we'll write 10 squared is equal to 8 squared plus z squared. Go ahead and simplify that. We get 100 equals 64 plus z squared. We subtract 64 from each side. And we get 36 equals z squared. Uh, from there, square root both sides. Uh, square root of 36 is 6. So z is going to equal 6. So instead of putting z here, I can just put 6. Now I can solve these last two pieces using ratios. So I can say 10 is to 7 as 8 is to y. So that'll be my first ratio. And the other ratio I can use is 10 is to 7 as 6 is to x. So these two ratios will help me solve for these problems. Solve by cross multiplying. Over here I get 10y equals 42. Divide each side by 10. And uh, I can either put this in fraction or decimal form. Uh, decimal form is really easy. 42 divided by 10 is just going to equal 4.2. If I wanted to put it into a fraction, it would be 21 over 5. So 21 over 5 or 4.2. Uh, this one, we cross multiply. 10x is going to equal 40. Oh, hold on one second. I messed up over here. 7 times 8 is not 42. It is 56. So this one should be 5.6 or, uh, let's see here, 23 over 10. Or sorry, 23 over 5. And this one, 7 times 6 is 42. See, I caught myself once I got that 42 there because I was like, that's not right. I can't. Anyways, so we divide each side by 10, and x would equal 4.2, or 21 over 5. So for final answers, we've got z equals 6, uh, y equals 5.6, and x equals 4.2. All right, next example. We're going to be moving on to 3.4. So in the book, this is the problem we're presented with. We have two similar right triangles, but one is inside of the other. We need to find A, B, and C. And again, I have so expertly recreated these on my paper. Uh, and 
it's easy to sell to see which sides correspond to each other but the problem is one of these triangles is inside the other so it would help us out a lot if we redrew each of them separately so this first small triangle is easy it's going to be a four and six the second triangle is a little bit trickier and this is the the most common questions that i get on these problems for the second triangle is b the entire hypotenuse or is b only the length from here to here well b is only the length from here to here the entire hypotenuse would be a plus b and that's how you should write it there same thing with this bottom end uh, the bottom length is obviously not only four it is four and six which gives us a length of ten and then the right side is easy that is only c from here we go uh, right back into our solving procedures. Uh, this small triangle you should be able to tell we can solve for a using Pythagorean theorem. So we can write 4 squared plus 6 squared equals a squared. 4 squared is 16, 6 squared is 36. Um, when we add those we get 52. So a squared, let's see here, root 52, 26, and 13 okay so we the square root of a squared is just going to be a if we factor 52 we can get 2 and 26 and 26 will become 2 and 13 so a would equal 2 times the square root of 13 so that's one answer right there now once we have that answer we can also fill that into here instead of keeping this as a plus b We'll write this as 2 times the square root of 13 plus b. That is our new hypotenuse on this side. And now we're going to use ratios again to solve for the missing part. So we'll use 6 and 10 as our base ratio. So we can say 6 is to 10 as 4 is to c. And then we can say that 6 is to 10 as... 2 times the square root of 13 is to 2 times the square root of 13 plus b. So we'll start with the easy one first. Uh, cross multiply, and then we get 40 equals 6c. Divide each side by 6. And let's see here. That'll become 20 over 3 once we reduce it. Okay, so we could say that C is equal to, let's go down here where our answers are, 20 over 3. Now, uh, let's solve for B, the last one. So we cross multiply here, and on the left side we get 10 times the square root of 13, and on the right side we have to distribute the 6 to each of the terms, so we get 12 times the square root of 13 plus 6B. Uh, from here, we're going to subtract 12 root 13 from each side. That gives us negative 2 root 13. And the last thing we need to do is divide by 6. And that will reduce to negative 1 third. So we have negative square root of 13 over 3. Uh, the 1 is invisible there. And that's going to be the value of b. And those are our answers.